Hi friends of the advanced guitar playing. We just saw and heard in beautiful landscape the improvised prelude of my Fantasia Antigua, which is indeed something like a Renaissance richer car or a fugue, because the richer car is a polyphonic piece out of which the fugue evolved. Fantasia or richer car are used for the same kind of piece because in those times they used to improvise those pieces. Luis Milan in the foreword to his six pavanas calls the pavanas fantasias and he says you should play them two or three times and improvise on them. So this prelude was an improvisation and if you arrive on the second part, which is with the C major arpeggio, you hear the theme clearly and from this point I follow the harmonies of the score, but I play it more free, as if I'm searching and looking and finding and so on. So now let's hear the fugue that follows and if you know the first film on my main channel, the first film was something like a basic version and this film is like an ornamented version and this is the same thing in the Fantasia. You first have an A part, then we have a B part which is different but uses the same material and then we have a reprise of the first part but with more ornaments and with an exactor and more creative view of my name in music. So enjoy! Thank you. 
See, this was fun, huh? You heard the first part was like a serious, richer car. And the theme is made out of the letters, which also have tone names, like G, E, G. And then the surname comes. You might say it's A, E, A. It's just, in German, the V, the W, the V, you hear more E than W. And later, after this first part, I made a more open, three-dimensional, more cantabile movement, which also uses the same material. But now I did something that Galileo invented. It's more like an aria. You have a clear melody and you have a note that uses the chorus of the G string, the double chorus. And all these notes are played on this one chorus because it's a different sound, something like a clarinet. The upper notes are something like an oboe or a flute. And then in the bass you have the short played staccato. So you clearly have this three-dimensional. So the melody is loudest, the middle note is soft, and the bass is short and mezzo forte. At the end of this part, with the experience of having proceeded until this point, I thought, now I could try to make my whole name in music. And when you look at the guitar, you have a perfect O here. And if you do a drum, you have an R. The I is the highest note that we have in Germany. We don't say I, we say E. And it's written E, E. So you take the octave of the E string and do the L. A, and then we have the W, the W is you see, ya di da di, the A again and two L's. This is definitely a little more modern than Renaissance, but you never know what they did. We know from Bieber and other guys who made very adventurous music, like uh, imitating uh, battles with guns and fighting things and musicians have to beat their instruments with the bow and so on. So they were also very creative. But these things are not written down. And then we come to the next thing. Why do I do this explanation? Usually we hear a piece and we say, oh, I want to play it. Then we get the score and we start practicing. We read the fingering and then something like the music evolves. But writing a piece is totally different. Writing a piece is that you first have the idea for a piece, that you make plans, that you have knowledge about musical architecture, that you have knowledge about handcraft, of music theory, and that you have knowledge of the instrument that you are writing for. And so you have th three stations of evolution in this piece. We have three parts, and in the composition we can see how the composer evolves the material. And then you start rehearsing it. And then you find out, oh, but this is a little difficult to play. It sounds good, but if I do it another way, it sounds better and it's easier to play. You know, you should have a piece that you can play through without suddenly having very difficult things. And now we see that at the end of part two, I evolved the concept of putting my name into notes. 
And then when the reprise came, I did not do the same thing like in the beginning. I did something like a double. So we heard the original theme quite often now. It's Now I do You see, I learned something. I learned the W. And I was taking the W out of this funny passage and I put it to the reprise in all voices. It makes it more difficult, but it's fun to evolve the piece. And then if you have a look at the notes, you see that there are many things that I wrote in the score with my pencil. So I again changed things. For example, this last passage that the first time, it's, it's like a, a little solo thing. It's And the second time I had an organ point down there because it's more heavy and it gives more the impression that we are coming to an end. And let us not forget that the musicians of the Renaissance were not amateurs. They were not going there and reading tabulature. They had the music, what they wanted, in their minds. And they only wrote it down on tabulature because this was usual in that time. But Francesco da Milano had a post of an organ player in the main cathedral in Milano. So he was used to reading notes, to reading scores. Huh? And he has definitely made organ compositions or vocal compositions that we don't have today. And we also don't have his lute music out of his own writing. We only have the copies that he left whenever he was traveling through Europe, whenever somebody came and said, hey, uh, show me how you play this fantasia. And he gave him his tabulature and this guy copied it. Or he did his own version. So we don't know if all the Francesco da Milano pieces are originally by him or if some other lute player has made his version. Like the Spanish vihuela players, they did their own versions of da Milano. But there's another thing I wanted to mention. If you have a theme, whenever you play a fugue or you have a theme, then try to find out how you can do your own phrasing of this theme. Let's see here. You, a usual lute player plays maybe. But when you play And you go on with this phrasing. It's very simple. You have da short or I will do another tutorial on Villa Lobos, how you can phrase these well known pieces that are always played in the same manner in a different way and get some interesting new aspects of this music. So I hope you enjoyed this course, this eight course information on Richard Carr and on how to do a composition and how to evolve the piece in three stages. It's the same if you play a piece at home. You first have to decipher the music then you have to bring it to your body and then you can start to play it and you can interpret it. And this is the spiritual 
the intellectual and the soul part of the whole thing, because music is soul food. Have a nice time. <laughs>